Alright, hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video where we're going to be taking a look at the Zig PSP toolchain, also known as Zig PSP. But before we get into it, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could go down there, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell to be notified of whenever I upload more cool project releases like this. So for some of you in the crowd, you might not exactly know what Zig is. Zig is a general purpose programming language and toolchain for maintaining robust, optimal, and reusable software. It really fits into this sort of niche between being like a C replacement and being a completely different language in its own right. It's got some pretty cool features, uh, a lot more safety checks, a lot more uh, error handling, and a lot better of a sort of syntax than C, and it helps you avoid a lot of the pitfalls with stuff like defer, and other things like that. It's also taking a completely different approach to sort of programming and it's got a really cool feature called compile time uh, which means that you can execute or evaluate uh, different sort of branches of logic at compile time. It also supports good unit testing and other sort of features which are very useful for testing out things at compile time to make sure that they actually do work instead of you know getting into your application and then finding it crashes or it throws an error somewhere or something like that. So in the space of making programs for the Sony PlayStation Portable, uh, Zig is actually pretty useful in this regard because we have a lot of C APIs which really do have uh, some uh, issues, especially with error handling and things like that. For example, you can really easily create something that will just crash straight on hardware and you will never know exactly why or where something is going wrong. Zig will most likely be able to help you catch this uh, directly or through unit tests. Uh, either way, you'll be able to actually go ahead and figure out where your errors are occurring without necessarily uh, having to go ahead and uh, spend hours upon hours debugging. Personally, it fits my uh, sort of subset that I use of C++. Uh, it pretty much fills in everything that I really need out of a language, and I've really liked programming in this language for over a month now. So getting into the toolchain. The toolchain is available as a uh, GitHub repository, which contains pretty much everything you need. Uh, it's basically containing all of the tools, uh, all of the dif different uh, SDK things, the functions that you need, and a bunch of useful utilities that come alongside it. The utilities are documented, although the actual SDK is not. Uh, the SDK has its own documentations in C, which should do fine, uh, mainly due to the fact that they're pretty much just uh, imported directly into Zig. The SDK also handles quite a bit of other things, uh, including all of the basics needed for setting up a PSP executable uh, alongside of everything else there. To simply use the toolchain, all you need to do is run Zig build and it will build your PSP application. It makes it very simple and it is customizable as well. The toolchain uses uh, some basic comp time uh, logic in order to see uh, what is basically being imported into the project and it's going to only use the modules that you specify it to use. Uh, this way we can create much smaller binaries uh, by eliminating the need for that and Zig's lazy uh, top-down analysis is really helpful for this. It helps make the executables much smaller than default GCC. There is a template uh, which you can use uh, that's publicly available uh, that basically allows you to have uh, your own copy of the toolchain actually allows you to go ahead and pretty much remove uh, the things inside of those modules that you don't really need for even smaller uh, end releases. So if we take a look at a very simple sample here which is the default sort of hello world with all the home button callback and everything that you would pretty much expect, we can see that a Zig application will go ahead and generate in about 7200 bytes on release small. This uh, pretty much is 7200 bytes including the entire size of the uh, basically the uh, package. Uh, w the raw executable size itself is 6842 bytes which is uh, a tiny bit smaller and can only be run off of uh, specialized applications like PSP Link. When we compare this to the overall size that we see in the GCC toolchain, we find that the GCC toolchain outputs about 67,000 bytes, which is a lot bigger than uh, about 7,200, uh, meaning that we have effectively cut out 
uh, I believe about 88% of how space that was needed to do the same exact task. With a few modifications to do the exact same sort of thing here, we can go ahead and try to rebuild it here. And what you're going to see is that we can bring it down just a tiny bit more by writing slightly more verbose code. Uh, this actually ends up cutting about another 200 uh, bytes off of the entire size of everything. Now, technically, you don't need the home button callback. And if we were to go ahead and disable this really quickly, now we're going to go ahead and see that we go ahead and bring it down another 400 bytes or so. Either way, this is a really good uh, sample compared to what uh, GCC outputs by default, and it makes it a lot nicer uh, for the end user. Now, I'm comparing this as the end user experience. Of course, you can go pretty far down with GCC as well to about the same level, uh, but that's generally much more difficult, requires its own custom linking script and all of that, uh, whereas this is a lot simpler and a lot cleaner, uh, which can be accomplished in very few lines of code. This project would not have been possible if it wasn't for some of the work already done by and some of the knowledge gained by the Rust PSP development team, and I have linked the repository on the front page of Zig PSP's repository as well for you to check out Rust on the PSP as well. Alright, so in order to go ahead and uh, work with Zig PSP, you're going to go ahead and need to install uh, Zig from the master branch uh, on the latest working version uh, from ziglang.org. Pretty much, this will include everything you need, it includes the compiler and the linker, and everything should work through that way. It can be used on version 0.6 due to the fact that uh, a patch that was needed for the compiler uh, was not made until uh, relatively recently. This means that in version 0.7.0, uh, Zig PSP will be fully supported and stable. In the future, I want to go ahead and start working on some more stuff, uh, including a custom OS module, which would basically allow you to uh, use a lot more of the standard library, although most of the standard library already uh, can work pretty much on what already exists. But it would be really nice to have some of these OS specific features. Uh, I think it pretty much applies to like a POSIX standard, which is pretty easy to accomplish with the PSP since it's most of the way there in the first place. So I think that would be a pretty cool idea for uh, basically doing uh, any of these. Either way, expect more features and a lot uh, better support in the future as this project continues, of course. Uh, I will be working on several other projects uh, that have been uh, pretty much uh, allowed by the uh, Zig PSP toolchain into the future. Thank you guys for making it this far into the video. Not many people do, so I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. Also, go down in the description and go ahead and take a look at some of the links to uh, Zig PSP and its related projects. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video.